Hello, this is Peter Foy, Senior Technical Marketing Manager with GigaDevice, and welcome to my series on Embedded MCU Design. I'm Peter Foy, Senior Technical Marketing Manager with GigaDevice. And today I'm going to introduce you to Embedded Builder. Embedded Builder is the free IDE uh, from GigaDevice. It allows you to develop with any of our GD32 MCUs. So let's go ahead and get started. So there are a set of uh, tools, IDE tools that are available to develop with the GD32 uh, series of MCUs. Uh, you know, typically you could use the ARM your Kyle tool, IAR workbench. And there's also a myriad of other device IDEs that are available and support uh, GD32 development. So again, I'm here today to go over the GD32 embedded builder tool. It is free and it supports all of our MCUs. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at next. So Embedded Builder is built on Eclipse. Eclipse is an IDE that allows, uh, you know, uh, product selection, project management, has a code editor, compiler, debugger included in it. And the debugger that we support is the GDB uh, General Debugging Wizard. And there's also a couple of probes that are supported as well. Our, our own GD Link uh, debugger and also JLink. Uh, the GD link is included on all of our uh, evaluation kits and starter kits. So you don't have to go out and purchase one unless you're developing your own custom hardware. So uh, there are uh, tools that were included in the embedded builder that uh, Giga device developed. There's a graphic configuration tool, code generation tool as well. Uh, again, these uh, this graphic configuration Today is only supported in the E230 and the F3X series, series of devices to date. Uh, there are plans to include all those, those, uh, all the MCUs in this, this uh, embedded builder tool, but that's what we've started with thus far. So uh, with the graphic configuration tool, uh, you have a pin assignment based uh, tool uh, based on your, your package outline. There's also a clock configuration tool. So uh, based on whether you're using an external oscillator, internal oscillator, then you can include the, the clock dividers and multipliers inside that uh, clock configuration tool for your clock tool chain. Uh, there's also peripheral, peripheral configuration uh, tool as well for you know, DPA, DMA, GPIO, et cetera. So after you set up uh, the graphic configuration and uh, for your device, you can go in and uh, uh, create the code using a code generator tool. And basically, based on the graphic configuration tool, it'll import all the how firmware libraries based on the graphic configuration. So uh, it'll, it'll generate code based on the pin clock and peripheral configurations from the graphic configuration tool. There's also additional project settings. You can set the stack size, the heap, et cetera. Uh, where you're getting your firmware library, et cetera. So all those features are included in the Embedded Builder tool. So today I'm going to start with a simple uh, project and uh, it's going to be used in an evaluation kit. And the evaluation kit actually has a GD32L233 MCU on it. Uh, this uh, MCU in particular is for extremely low power uh, applications. So, you know, typically you get four uh, different power states with, with ARM. You actually have uh, 10 different power modes with, with this device itself. So a lot of granularity there for a low power design. You get three run states, you get three sl sleep states, you get uh, three uh, low uh, energy states or deep sleep modes. 
and then also a st standby mode. So a total of 10 modes for low power development. So you have security in, included in device as well. Uh, you know, a, a nice set of peripherals, a UART. There's also a, a DAC as well as an ADC. And then some uh, nice, a nice set of uh, timer support, PWM generation and input capture. So there's, uh, it's available in five different packages as well. So again, applications uh, that any anything for battery powered e-tools, devices, wearables. Uh, basically, this is a, a general purpose uh, ultra low power MCU. So this this is an overview of the evaluation kit. Again, it's, it's using the L233. You have access to all the MCU I.O. pins. Uh, there's also uh, includes basic configuration, including clock, I.O. nodes. There's LEDs. There's uh, also ADC DAC input output. There's onboard internal memory, uh, I squared C EEPROM, and QSPY flash on there as well. There's also an LCD driven by the SLCD controller. Uh, there's also examples for uh, security using our cryptographic acceleration unit, etc. So there's also a, a demo suite of software that's included uh, for IAR and, and Kyle. Now you can import these demo suites in, into the Embedded Builder tool as well. So uh, I'm going to show you inside the, the Embedded uh, Builder tool how to uh, basically come up and develop a real simple design. Uh, again, the L233 doesn't support the graphic config configuration, but uh, I can show you how this, how the tool will actually generate a piece of example code. And a piece of example code that it, that, that, uh, it uh, basically generates whenever you select the L233 is this external button interrupt demo. So it, it uses a general purpose input uh, to control the LDD and the, and the button. So it uses the uh, wake up button to produce an interrupt. And when that interrupt is serviced, it's actually going to toggle the LED too. So let's go ahead and get started. Great. So let's go ahead and fire up Embedded Builder. So the first thing that's going to pop up here is uh, it's going to ask you where you want your workspace to be. I've already created a directory here. So let's go ahead and, and launch the Embedded Builder tool. So you can see here, it goes over what the Embedded Builder provides, project creation, graphic configuration. Again, L233 is not supported with graphic configuration. And then project debugging. You could create a GD project, but then you're limited to only the F3X0 and, and the, also the other device that supports the graphic configuration tool. You can also import projects. Uh, they're available over here as well. Uh, tools that are available, the programmer, and then there is a user manual for this, actually, this tool itself. So all those are available there. You could go over here, data sheets are available for all the devices. There's user manuals for all of the, the uh, devices as well. Again, demo suite, you can download demo suites for the L233 is right here. And then firmware libraries for all the devices are available here, all at your fingertips. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a new, a new project. Just, so I'm gonna select file new uh, project. Then I'm gonna create a C, C, C project and then select next. So, I don't want to create an empty project. You could do that, but I'm going to go ahead and, and select uh, an ARM-based uh, project. Again, this select this tool, Embedded Builder, which is free, it supports all of our MCUs. So not only the ARM, but also the RISC V MCUs are supported as well. So I'm going to give it a project name, and just, let's just call it uh, Linky. ISR. So again, uh, we're using the L233, so the GD32L233, and it just happens to be the first device in the list that's on 
the eval kit itself. So I'm going to select uh, next here. So you can see it's going to create uh, both uh, an, a release uh, project, project and also a debug project. And so we're going to select finish. So when you do that, it looks like nothing's happened, but actually you have to go to the, the uh, perspective. Uh, so there's a couple different perspectives here. There's the C, C++, debug perspective. There's other perspective as well. So uh, what was created? So it actually creates source, and then again, it includes uh, all your libraries for this device, all the firmware, the SimSys library for this, the uh, standard peripheral library for the L23, and then it creates a, uh, a main file. So uh, this is uh, basically the main program. So it's going to go in, and the first thing it's going to do is going to configure SysTick, which basically configures your clock tree. Uh, then you're going to uh, it actually initializes the co couple of LEDs. Uh, we're actually going to be able to communicate back to the UART that's on the board, and the UART's basically emulated through a, a USB port, so we can set that up as well. And then it does uh, the initializations of, of the key or the button. So uh, the wake up key is what's included. Uh, and then uh, what we're going to do after we initialize it, it's going to actually report back out through the UART um, the clock frequencies for the CPU itself, the AMBA bus, the AMBA peripheral bus one, and AMBA, AMBA peripheral bus two. So all that's included in the in the code itself. So um, you know we got a couple of uh, print it, print statements here. Uh, actually, these uh, retarget the printf function uh, and the the input character IO character as well to the UART. So all that's included. Uh, this is basically the they're calling what LED Spark and what it does. It's going to uh, this is going to toggle LED one at a cadence of, of uh, one second. So uh, after you program the LED one, is going to actually blink off and on at one uh, cadence of one second. And then, like I said, this this uh, uh, interrupt is going to be serviced here inside the while loop, the forever while loop. So it's going to go get the wake up key, and then it's going to toggle LED two. But that that's actually there is uh, inside the uh, setup uh, code. It it sets up the interrupt service routine. Routine. So I'll leave that for you to look at yourself. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go and I'm actually going to build the uh, pro project. So a couple of different ways to do that. I usually just go up here and select the uh, project itself, right mouse click on it, and then select build project. So this shouldn't take too long. Okay, so it finished building the project itself. The next thing we want to do is when we go in here and we want it uh, to run as or debug as, so, and then I'm going to select debug and debug configurations next. But before I do that, since we're going to be printing some stuff out through the UART, I'm going to go ahead and use my Terra term. Uh, and it's, uh, we have, it's actually using COM6. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up. And then the serial port is actually running at uh, 115.2. So I'm going to select COM6 at 115.2. And then whenever we actually start running the project, it, it'll uh, go, through, go through there. So I'm going to again select a project here up here to, uh, with my left mouse button, right mouse click on it, select debug as, go to debug configurations. So we're going to do under uh, general D, G, 
GDB general debugging, we're gonna select it. And you can either select a plus or you can double click. And uh, we want to, to use the ELF uh, file that was created when we did, uh, when we compiled the, the project itself under the, DB, the debug uh, directory. Then we go in here and select the debugger. Again, the GD link is on the board itself, so it automatically uh, sees that. So uh, it's as simple as that. So then we can select debug. And then a splash screen will come up here and it'll ask, you know, do you want to change to the debug perspective? And when it does, we're going to say switch. So uh, if you'll note here, there are now a set of icons at the top of the tool that weren't there before. So we could actually terminate, we could run or resume. Uh, you know, when you, when you initially come up into uh, out of reset, you're going to go into what some people call, you know, a bootloader or startup code. Basically, you set up your stack, your heap, and, and some other uh, things are done here as well. So if we go to the main program and we uh, basically set a breakpoint here, break here at our while, uh, at our while loop, or we could set one here as well as you can select, set uh, several breakpoints inside your code as well. So then we can actually, uh, let's go ahead and, I don't know if I can bring up my thermal emulator here or not. And we can go ahead and select run. And then it did, it stopped here at a couple of instructions before, but again, it's printing out through uh, the, the UR, you know, our system clock and also our AMBA bus clock. So it's running at 64 megahertz. So the next thing we could do, uh, I'll go ahead and, and change uh, perspective here so we can look at the board itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and, and select run uh, in the debugger itself. Then I'm going to go over to the board and I'm going to press the wake up button and we should be able to see that LED to actually toggle. So there you go. We can press the wake up button, call the I, uh, calls an ISR, and then the ISR basically toggles the LED too. So to finish up here, there's one last thing I need to uh, show you. So what we're gonna do, since we've been through, we've debugged the program, and we got everything running the way it should, we can actually go up here and terminate this little icon here. Uh, looks like a red, red square. We're going to terminate the session. So we're still in the debug perspective. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the Project Explorer. And uh, what we want to do is we want to program the device with a permanent file. So you can go here and you can select the project with a left mouse click. And then right mouse click and then select Download. That will download the project. And after downloading the project, you can see uh, the board is working the way it should. So we go here and press the tamper key again. We can toggle it back and forth. So, and then if you cycle power, the uh, project would still, or the program would still be in there. So again, that is a basic introduction to Embedded Builder. Again, it's a free IDE that's available from your FAE or you know, technical marketing manager like myself. Just request it and we can send you the files. Anyway, hope you have a great day. Thanks for joining me.